a rectifier converts AC into DC. Here is a full wave rectifier single phase that uses four diodes in a bridge. Two diodes conduct for one half cycle and the other two diodes conduct for another half cycle. During a positive half cycle, the current flows through the path D1, load D4 and competes the circuit. The output voltage VO is the same as the input. During a negative half circle, the current flows through the path D3, load D2, and completes the circuit. The output voltage VO is uh, the inverse of the input. The peak value of the sinusoidal wave is the square root 2 of its average voltage. We can derive the average of the output voltage. It's the shadow surface over the half circle time pi. The integral of the sine wave is the minus cos difference at the point 0 and pi. We get the average V out equals uh, 2 over pi V peak. Now let's see how a three phase rectifier works. The input phase natural voltage is VAN, VBN, and VCN. They are 120 degrees uh, defaced. To see which diode is on, we need to compare the voltage at the point ABC. Looking at the phase 1, VAN is bigger than VCN and then VBN. Thus D1 is on. The current flows from A, D1, back to the lowest point B through D6. The output voltage is VAN minus VBN equals VAB. The phase 2 has the same principle. We have the output voltage equals VAC. Now to derive the average of the output voltage, it's the shadow surface over the third cycle time pi. The integral of the sine wave is minus cos uh, differences at the point uh, 3 third pi and 2 over 3 third pi. We get the average uh, VO equals uh, pi by 3 V peak phase. Actually, we can change the diode to thyristor or IGBT. The rectifier becomes controllable. When I fire the thyristor T at the time alpha, we get the output voltage equals input voltage until pi plus alpha. Then the next pair of T are fired. The output is the opposite of the input. The average value is just the integral for sine wave from alpha to pi plus alpha over pi. It's uh, 2 over pi v peak cos alpha. The same thing happens on a controlled thyristor three-phase rectifier. The output follows the line-to-line -line voltage while the thyristors are fared. To calculate the average output voltage, we need to use this shadow surface to divide a third pi. Here the cos third pi or two third pi plus alpha can be derived by this formula and we get the final value cos alpha. The biggest weakness of uh, diode rectifiers is that uh, due to the rectification, the current form is totally changed and may have lots of harmonics, thus a low factor power. Even with the thyristor, we don't have 100% control, since the thyristor can only be switched on. With the IGBT, we can switch on and off. With the IGBT in the rectifier, we can rectify the AC as we wish to obtain less harmonics and a higher power factor. There are many ways to control the switches. One YouTube video explains these methods well. I put the YouTube link in the show notes. Normally, the power factor is the, the cosine phi. Phi is the angle between voltage and current. This is only applicable when both the voltage and current are sinusoidal. 
distortion power factor is a cosine fine divided by root of 1 plus THD square. THD is a total harmonic distortion. When THD is high, we get a low power factor. The TH total harmonic distortion is defined as the RMS of total harmonics over the RMS of fundamental wave. And if we want to get the harmonics, we need to do the Fourier transform to the waveform. The Fourier transform represents a period signal by the combination of sine and cosine with the coefficient an and bn. Let's start with a simple case. Symmetrical angle method. We close the S1, S4 at the pi minus beta over 2 and open them at the pi plus beta over 2. The S2 are operated oppositely. We get the input current in the waveform like this. It's symmetrical, so it doesn't have uh, even order harmonics. So no second, fourth, sixth order, etc. The lowest order harmonic is the third order. We see that by controlling the switches, we can already eliminate the even order harmonics and control other harmonic, but the third order harmonic is still difficult to filter. To eliminate more harmonics, we must use PWM control, pulse wave modulation. That means during the half cycle, we turn on off the switches multiple times, so that we will obtain more high frequency harmonics, which are easy to eliminate with the filter, and we have less low frequency ones. There are many ways to obtain the PWM. We can keep the symmetrical method, just add more commutations, or use a sinusoidal PWM. A sinusoidal PWM is a comparison result between the carrier and the modulating sign. We can see here if we change the modulating sinusoidal signal we can have different PWM. South, the THD will also change. But uh, how do we vary uh, the modulated sinusoidal based on which references? Well, uh, we can put some controllers to decide. Here is an example. The output reference minus output goes to a PI controller. The PLL phase lock loop provides the phase. Together they can produce a sinusoidal signal to compare with the input current. The result goes into a proportional resonant PR controller. The PR controller has better performance than PI controller when tracking a AC signal. But we can also use a PI controller here. The output of the controller is the reference of uh, modulating sinusoidal waves. We can get the SPWM to control the IGBTs. This control algorithm is introduced in a paper. I put the link in the show notes. When it comes to a three-phase IGBT rectifier, there is uh, the additional ABC to DQ transform. Since the transformed DQ currents are more easy to find the reference, ID comes from the output DC and IQ should be zero. For three phase, another important PWM is SV PWM, which means space vector PWM. Mm -hmm.